Alrighty, well welcome to another short video from So Purdy Workshops. Yes, spell that like we say it in Kentucky. S-E-W-P-U-R-T-Y Workshops, okay? Not pretty like Medea would say it. <laughs> uh, this is a really unique machine, uh, turns out to be. Uh, I wanted to share real quick, I'm learning a lot about it the last few hours. Um, this machine actually came from a museum in Michigan. Um, best I can tell so far, what I understand, it was a donation that they didn't quite know what to do with. Um, this machine, this is not the original cabinet that this machine came in. Somebody has rigged a desk, um, made a really drop leaf there, put some drawers underneath it. Um, added the bobbin winder of course still got one of the old bobbins on it uh the little four-legged rig here that holds a spring-loaded motor motor's been broken looks like a long time ago it's had a wire added to it uh, it had been wired onto here this is one of the tags that was on it from the museum um pretty cool they put the bobbin winder or the spool spool holder and everything else up. but anyway what's what's interesting about the machine is <clears throat> Now last night, this uh, the slide plate was totally illegible. Couldn't read anything on it except barely read the serial number, which is 11386. And, but this morning I was able to read all the patent dates. And I'm going to try to zoom in on that. This is everything that's on the uh, slide plate. Um... Last patent date, anyway, is 1890. Let's see where I can get it worried about focus. But anyway, <clears throat> notice zigzag. Uh, this is a Wheeler and Wilson number 12, by the way. Uh, if you look up on the internet, uh, any information you find on a Wheeler and Wilson 12, all this stuff is not on it. The Wheeler and Wilson 12 has a pressure foot. It's either a wheel feed or a dog feed. That's uh, normally uh, the Wheeler Wilson 12 is. And it was an industrial leather and tailoring machine, depending on how it was outfitted. This machine's unique because it didn't ever have a presser foot, it does not have feed dogs, it has all this crazy rig on it right here. And if I can get down here and do, all right, this bell crank is attached. Let me get back up here. I know I'm moving around a lot and shaking, and I, there's no way I can make this video with a tripod, though. Um, this bell crank is attached to this, which goes down. I've unhooked the spring so I can make this video. Otherwise, I can't make this video of what I'm fixing to do. This goes down to the knee bar, the knee lever. And if you see, I move the knee lever, and it moves that. All right, I'm going to move this back up here for the moment. And when I turn the hand wheel, you see all this stuff here is moving. But as you hit the knee lever, move that down. Notice this is stupid autofocus. <laughs> Notice the arm is zigzagging. Now with the spring attached, this would this would move up here on its own and then when you hit the knee lever you're pushing against the spring and you actually control the zigzag or the stitch width with your knee and what we've figured out is uh, this is apparently now this is my speculation right at the moment anyway it's apparently the predecessor of the Singer 107W102 which is a free motion embroidery machine. Um, <clears throat> we are missing a, th a throat plate. That is the only part I can find missing on this machine and I am shaking like crazy. Um, interesting because uh, to me anyway that it was the last, last patent date on this is 1890. Um, saw some pictures of another machine that is an early singer somewhat similar to this machine actually has the badge in or the place in the bed for the badge uh, for the Wheeler and Wilson badge 
but evidently it's quite a few years later because I think the earliest patent date on it is 1892 and this one is like I said last patent date of 1890 uh, Singer didn't acquire Wheeler and Wilson for another what is it 1905 1906 so this was built I'm guessing anyway way before Singer acquired Wheeler and Wilson um, so it kind of makes me wonder is this the technology that or the patents anyway that Singer really wanted to get their hands on <laughs> I don't know uh, it's all speculation anyway I just thought it was a really interesting machine I wanted to share it a little bit I wish I could run it um, but until I get it totally disassembled and everything cleaned polished put back together and look as good as I can make it look give it one of the so pretty workshops uh, makeovers um, this is pretty much what we got like I said uh, I, I just love the way that all works right there doing the zigzagging uh, never seen a machine that operated quite like this uh, it makes me wonder I guess since it being a free motion embroidery machine uh, was more of a reason that somebody would alter an old desk to uh, mount it in it instead of the industrial table that this machine was probably in originally um, given its date or given the time period that it was manufactured anyway I'm gonna say that it was not originally an electric machine it was either a foot powered treadle machine um, or driven off of a uh, st steam or something uh, probably not electric anyway when it was originally built um, this is a this is an aftermarket rig that has been put on there these are these were common back in the time period the friction drive and uh, I just thought I was interested wanted to share it and please if you recognize this if you know anything about what Wheeler and Wilson was doing with free motion embroidery uh, before Singer <clears throat> drove them into the point where they could take them over, uh, Crooked Corporation, uh, uh, please let me know. Please, please message me or something, uh, <clears throat> or comment on this video. I'd really like to know more about this machine. I usually not all that interested in industrial machines. Um, we've got a house full of antique machines but very few industrials but this one being a kind of unique and significant in its time period as far as the technology uh, I was definitely interested in this thing uh, and I will have pictures later I maybe even post a video once I get the machine finished and, and I don't do embroidery <laughs> my wife <laughs> my wife's brother six needle does all that for her and so free motion embroidery is probably not something that's going to be done here other than maybe to demonstrate this machine and you can see just how uncoordinated I am. Alright, so I appreciate you watching the video and uh, if you have any questions um, or want to share something with me that, that would help out figure out a little bit more about this machine, I appreciate you commenting and uh, always visit us at soulprettyworkshops.com That's S-E-W-P-U-R-T-Y workshops and uh, Come join us in a workshop someday. We have a ball. Have a great day.